think the legacy of Coach Maroney goes greater than University of Connecticut. Coach Maroney was a forefather in college soccer. He built Maroney Stadium basically with his bare hand and the ACC, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, they all followed him and built bigger and better stadiums. He was the first guy to do interregional travel. He was the first, one of the first guys to actively recruit and, and also have a fundraising organization, the Friends of Soccer. I mean, Coach, Coach Maroney laid the blueprint not just for soccer at UConn, but more importantly for soccer in the country. UConn soccer was Coach Maroney. I mean, anyone that talked about UConn, you know, right away talked about Coach Maroney. And that's, that's what he made. It, it was his program. It was his legacy. He wanted to make it his legacy. It was the type of people that he brought in. It was his way. And the kids that came here, you know, not only became better soccer players, they left as better, better people. You know, and that's a testament to him, and it's a testament to his program. And uh, all I can say is, like, in the early 80s, I mean, UConn was the program. Coach Maroney, you've probably heard, was a disciplinarian. He had rules. Uh, he really took a bunch of passionate kids who loved playing soccer, and he turned them into a team that just played together and was um, very successful. I never went into coaching for money. What you coach for was to see guys become successful. So to me, uh, my 28 years of coaching and the rest in the School of Education is worth that kind of thing to see my players do well, and I, I'm thrilled. Coach Marnie would be primarily a very, uh, an idol, idol to me, as far as, uh, to me, he's uh, the best organizer. And in that respect, and I think um, that's, you don't really find somebody who's organized two years ahead of time. So pretty much uh, once we were, were in there, everything was really set to a certain pattern that had to be followed, and uh, really, again, once you follow them, you're becoming successful at that point. I mean, the man uh, was responsible for a lot of creating UConn soccer. He was a great coach, a very successful coach, um, certainly well known around the country. He's the godfather. I mean, I, I, we welcome him with open arms. We are respectful of what he's done. I know what I have today in large part comes to the 28 years of his labor here. Um, we have we've been able to build on his legacy and continue his outstanding tradition of excellence uh, with student athletes both in the classroom and on the field. So if I have him around, hey, all due respect, it's like being around the basketball program UCLA and having Coach Wooden there or, or being able to, to deal and speak with Coach Calhoun here or Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. This, is, this guy is UConn soccer. He has been, he always will be UConn soccer. Well, it's my life. simple as that. It's a program that I know I, I built, but in those days it was hard. But I was determined I was building this program and it was, I felt it was mine. I've gone on to different things and I still look back at some of the things that Coach taught us, you know, as 17, 18, 19 year olds that are now, you know, transcending to us as older people. And I think if, you know, Tony talks about that or Charlie McSpira talks about that or, or Franz talks about that, it's all about what Coach Maroney meant to us individually and as a family and as a group of teammates. Well, I, I think that the most important thing to me has always been the students. Uh, whatever I could do, directly or indirectly to help them, I always, I always did that. And I was always there for them if they needed me. As far as the program, um, I would hope that uh, people would say that uh, he worked hard and um, he got the most out of his players. ESPN, your total sports network, presents College Soccer 81. Today, the national championship game between the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M and the Huskies of the University of Connecticut. And we get to the final, and we're playing Alabama A&M. And we won in overtime, as you know, on Jim Dasanio's great header. I can still remember the play now. Back up field for Carlos. Slides it sideways, nifty move by DeBrito. He maintains possession. Now from uh, Jim Lyman to, uh, to to Elvis to Pedro. Chipped up field by Lyman for Dorsani. This game is over. Boom! Ball is going in the net.
And, uh, I had to jump on the pile. To win a national championship, you have to be good. Sometimes you have to have a referee's call. Sometimes you have to be a little lucky. Uh, sometimes you have to have a great game by someone you're not expecting it. And everything falls into place and you win.